Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another video for prophetic moments in this season. Today I have a very special guest with me and I'd love to introduce you to Johan Janssen van Vieren. Johan, welcome and I'm so pleased that you had the time to join us today and I look forward to our discussion this morning. So welcome with us today. Thank you, Yanai. So Johan, you are currently, I mean, I've known you for many years, but currently you run the Prophetic Intercession Team. Uh, you are part of uh, the Academy of Prophecy as a mentor. You're a teacher as well. You um, even go and preach. You're invited to churches. You preach and you prophesy there. And then, of course, you're part of our development team at our local church. So you seem to be a jack of all trades. You're involved with many things and you've been involved in the prophetic for many, many years. And I'm, I'm truly thankful that today you're going to share a little bit of your wisdom and your knowledge. And we are going to encourage the young adults to join with prophetic intercession. So our topic is prophetic intercession, but obviously we're going to touch a lot on the prophetic as well. And and both of us are quite passionate about the topic and so I look forward to hearing uh, about your experiences but I'd love to start off with an, a quick testimony I told Johan this last year that I had the privilege I was invited to participate in the God Set 2020 book and during that day we all got together at our local church we sat around a round table uh, with a microphone in the middle and there were many other prophetic people obviously involved in the project and the microphone was being moved you know, basically passed on from one person to the next to the next. And every time the microphone came past, you know, we had to prophesy over a specific topic. And then once everybody has prophesied, we would change immediately into, you know, over onto a new topic. And at the time I said to you, Han, afterwards that if it wasn't for our prophetic intercession meetings, where we, he had to train us, you know, to think quickly and to move in the spirit quickly and to receive information and receive that download from heaven. There's no way I would have been able to sit around that table with all the other prophetic people. And I was encouraged by the training that Johan had done with our team. And this, this is mainly for, for people who are part of our prophetic development team. So Johan, I really want to honor you again for that opportunity that you trained us, not only me, but all the other people in our team to hear from God clearly and concisely. And, and in such a way that we can interact with the Holy Spirit um, at, you know, at any given moment and to hear the Father's heart for the nation and for what's going on in our community. So thank you for that, Johan. So Johan, please will you share with us, how do you interact with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis? You know, how do you hear from the Lord? Thank you for that uh, resume. Uh, <laughs> I did not know that I had such a big resume, but thank you for that. And thank you for the feedback. It's always good to hear about the feedback uh, as teachers and um, of the word. We don't often hear the feedback. And it's just encouraging to me as well that that made a difference in, the, in your ministry. And I hope that will touch the others as well. Absolutely. Hearing from God started many years ago. Um, I'm not going to give you the here. It might spoil the whole thing, but in any case, at that point in time, there was no prophetic classes, module ones and twos and things like that at that point in time. And when I got saved, I joined this, this local church and the pastor was amazing. He was very prophetic as well. Uh, it touched my heart. He spoke from and, and, and revealed things of my past, word of knowledge and word of wisdom and all that kind of things. And, and it really triggered me. So when I joined the church, there was, there was no courses or anything like that. But what I had was intercession. I cannot remember, but I think it was Friday evening. So from, from circular to, to religion or Christian, Christianity, I moved Friday evenings to a church. And that was amazing. I spent about four years within that congregation. And in that time, we, I joined the intercession where we started to pray and and that is where i actually learned to hear the voice of the holy spirit and but i had no understanding what it was and what it actually mean to hear the voice of the god and, and what you see and what you hear and all that kind of things but the pastor then uh at, at some point in time he will call the group forward and then he will say okay what what did you see what did you hear and then we can start sharing and if you don't have an explanation or interpretation rather, 
he will start sharing. And that's the way I learned about intercession and about the prophetic as well. So that is my foundation. And I moved from there, I moved into the prophetic as well. Uh, we I joined another group of people and, and I got equipped within the prophetic as such. And that helped me to understand and have a better understanding how to discern the voice of the, of the Holy Spirit and how to interact with him as well. So I hope that will answer your question. Yes, I actually would love to honor Anita Giovanoni at this point. You, you mentioned that you did some training. I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to uh, the modules that Anita at Crocus Ministries uh, was presenting at the time. And of course, that has evolved over the years. And you're still part of the initial team. Uh, we often speak to some of the people who we know who are part of the, the prophetic. And that has been a journey for you since you were equipped and, and you transitioned into creating a prophetic community who you have journeyed with for, for for many many years and so i'm grateful that you journeyed with anita because that's how how our paths crossed and how we all got involved in prophetic intercession and i i'm i was trying to remember i think you've been running the prophetic intercession at our local church for about three years could it be could it be three years yeah it's something about three years as well but i did um previously for me when I was with Anita with Crocus Ministry, and yes, I, we, we do have to honor her because she's laid a, the prophetic foundation in my life. And I really honor her as a friend and, a, and as a mother within the prophetic as well. Uh, with the modules, there was, the, for me, was the, there was a emptiness or uh, an area which was lacking after the modules. Uh, everybody does the module one, two, and threes, and but then what happens afterwards? And then I sat down and I spoke to Anita and then I started a prophetic cell. Basically, it was just to catch the others coming from the modules or the academy into a cell. And then it actually started. Then we, we do more practical things, how to function within the, in the prophetic outside of the environment of the school and expose people to a lot of more things. So that was a great foundation for me as well, a learning curve to, to equip people and, and just help them to understand what's the prophetic all about. So I have to um, acknowledge and honor Anita for that one. Amen. I totally agree with you. I think all of us have got beautiful stories and memories to share of our journey with Anita. And, and last night when we met uh, for our prophetic intercession meeting, which is a once a month meeting, uh, we spoke about our interaction with pastors. And um, I'd love to ask your, your opinion on the fivefold. You know, we, it's wonderful. Like you said, we do the training and then, um, you know, not, not everybody comes from the same church who attends the academy. And of course, then they either go back to their churches or they join our development team. And of course, everybody in the development team are, you know, everybody's invited to your prophetic intercession training. Uh, but that does include that we need to interact with the fivefold as well. Um, I mentioned earlier that you would, were preaching recently in Polokwane, um, but for those of us who are with a local church, we do interact with our local pastors. And of course, we do have evangelists and we have people who are called into the office of those various uh, firefold ministries. So what would, you, what would you say, what is a really good tip on how do we interact with, with pastors being either in, in prophetic intercession or as prophetic people? What is a good tip for, for new people, um, how to, to engage with their pastors? The only one, and I really think this is the, the basis and the foundation of everything. It's not about the, the fivefold ministry as such, but there's this one area and it talks enough about the, the gifts of the, of the ministry and, and that's servanthood. So it doesn't matter where you function or what is your calling within the ministry, if it's pastor, prophet, evangelist, or teacher, or whoever that is, it doesn't matter. The scripture tells us as well, and I've seen that throughout the years as well, there's this one area, and that's to start to serve. Does it mean you're going to pack the chairs? Yes. Does it mean you're going to make the tea? Yes. That means that you have to host guests? Yes. All those things, do you have to play security? Yes, you have to do all those things. And as you start to, st to serve, you build a relationship with your pastors and your leadership. And then they will start to see the value 
what God has placed within you, and then they will start to use you. Often they will ask you to come and, and assist and help and sit in, the, in a meeting or, or do you have a prophetic word? Do you have something to share? And that will start to open up the doors for you. It is no good for, for anyone within the ministry or joining the ministry and say, listen, I'm a pastor, I'm a prophet, uh, where's my platform? I'm sorry, but you're going to get burned. Start to serve. That's the bottom line of everything. If you don't serve, you're not going to go in any way. You're not going to build a, a reputation, which is good. Because if you're just going to come in, you want to fly high, you're going to burn out the people, you're going to hurt the people, and that's not good for the prophetic ministry as well. As it is, the prophetic ministry is, 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 is not a, a welcomed ministry in every church. But as you start to serve, as you start to, to build relationship with your leadership, they will be able to see your heart. And if they see your heart, which is the Christ in you, then they will start to allow you to do a lot more things than what you used to. And then they will start seeing the gift in you. And then that will progress. Then you will be able to establish the, the prophetic within the church. You will have to, you will um, build relationship with other prophetic people and prophets. And, and that is the, the foundation of everything is to serve. I, I cannot emphasize that more than I can at this point in time. I absolutely agree with you, Johan. I see even at the Academy of Prophecy, the mentors who serve there, um, you know, they, we get to hear their gift in action. And because of that, we know exactly uh, for certain outreaches who to, who to invite with us. We can see gradually over the years how their gift develop and, and how they just blossom in the prophetic and how we eventually release them into leadership as well. And that starts with serving, exactly what you just said. And the more uh, the mentors who join, the more we interact with them, we become involved in their lives and they're involved in our lives. And, and like you said, we become a whole community we build a relationship of not only trust but a relationship of, of understanding how they prophesy and the accuracy you know keeping track and being accountable if and I you know I, I just want to take this opportunity that I do honor everybody who is involved in the prophetic however uh, if you are a lone ranger that is a very big risk um, being on your own uh, you run the risk of your prophecies not being um, held accountable for, for what you're saying. Or like Johan said, you don't have an opportunity or a platform to then go to the ministry market and to prophesy to the congregation. And, you know, we're not only called within the church, we are called outside the church. Absolutely. And we do have prophetic people who are evangelistic or apostolic or uh, more, more teacher orientated that that we do have but I do agree with you Johan that relationship is the very first foundational part of, of where we start to connect with each other and we still start to learn from each other as well so thank you for sharing on that I think we do, and I want to honor all, our, all of our local pastors who have the patience <laughs> to walk with us because the, the prophetic people are not always very easy um, but I do think that once we uh, engage in relationships with our local pastors, that they start to trust us and they start to value our prophetic gifting. And when the opportunity does arise and, the, and God says that we need to prophesy in a, in a meeting or on a Sunday morning, uh, that there will be an opportunity for those who do have relationship and who have built years of, of um, understanding uh, and walking a journey with those in the fivefold. So I'm encouraging those of you who are new, who are perhaps not involved in a church or are not serving, you know, do get involved, like Johan said, and, and build relationship with others, especially with your leaders. So that's really important. Johan, coming back to prophetic intercession, do you have a word for the season, something that you would like to share? You know, we are, are in the latter part of, of 2020. Um, we're still on level one with COVID here in South Africa. And obviously that's all different levels across the world. Uh, but is there any, any word of encouragement that you would like to encourage those who are listening today? Thank you, Elaine. Uh, I think this word and what I feel and, and understand what I've received from the Lord is, is perhaps South Africa, but also I think it goes wider than that, and that's for global, for, the, for every, every nation. 
Um, and there's, there's one thing that really pops out to me, and I've seen it and I've spoken about it, and this whole COVID thing has caused fear in people's lives. It's got a big reaction, and it's got people are getting sick, people are passing away, finances are being depleted, and all those kind of things as well. So really, fear creeps in, and that's the one thing the enemy wants us to do, and is to fear. But that is the opposite of what God wants. God wants us to turn to him and really trust in him because he will help us. Scripture tells us that he will support us. He will help us. He will look after us as well. And we need to sometimes just to take it literally and allow him to come and, and support us in that particular area as well. So fear is the one thing which, which we should not allow in our lives. Now with this whole pandemic thing, and it's caused a reset as well. For me, it's a reset, that this is shift. But if you think about a reset, if you do a reset, some device or anything, you lose all your information you had. If, you've taken, if you take it back to your factory reset, you lose all your information. There's no browser information, there's no contact details, there's, no, there's nothing, no notes, anything, and that's gone. So what we need to do is we have to start over again Yes, I would love to just grab the old and just run with the old again and bring a, do a restore, you know, that, that's me. But I feel that's not what God wants because there's a lot more he wants to reveal to us. As prophetic people and as the, the church itself as well, the whole body is moving into a new phase and um, a new phase of experiencing God in different levels and in different areas in our lives. So we have to embrace the new. Prophetic people are usually the front runners and, and they try and, and, they, and God will speak to them as well. But that falters down to the body of Christ as well. And, and, and the body needs to embrace it and stop. Let me rather say, don't stop at one place. Move on. Experience. Uh, um, ex ex what's the word? Uh, you know, exercise it and, and experiment. That's the word I was looking for, experiment. Um, hearing God's voice to a greater extent, what he used to as well. So there's a lot more things that we can do. And then the other thing, the third thing, which I felt is really important at this point in time is community. Now you need to define your community on your own. If it's your family, if it's close friends, it doesn't matter. You have to define your community and really help your community to come to a place where they can actually survive and prosper. We are, they are secure as well and, and help to establish a lot of things. I really feel that we need to prepare, we need to consolidate a lot of things. We have to plan ahead. If things do get more difficult, we have to be prepared. Uh, it so often it reminds me about Joseph, about the, the dreams he had um, going to Egypt and the, the drought and the, the seven years of, of good uh, where the prosper and the uh, seven dry years. So really we have to prepare in case. I'd rather be wrong in saying be prepared than if you don't do anything. So prepare for maybe times ahead which might become uh, difficult for us. So, but surround yourself with your community, surround yourself with people who can in, impart into you and help and sustain you as well. So yes, that is I, that is what I feel in my heart is really something we need to look at at this point in time. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. Last night at our meeting, you mentioned uh, multiple streams of income, being part of the community and being more uh, kind of intentional in a way and, and establishing multiple streams of income. And I know that currently many people are struggling financially. And I, gosh, I think it was at the beginning of last year when the Lord uh, started speaking to me about the multiple streams of income. So I'm, I'm cr always aware and looking out for additional opportunities. And I had a, a business meeting yesterday. And even after that meeting, I kept thinking, oh, you know, Lord, give me that divine strategy. You know, how do we, how do we implement creativity in such a way that because the platforms have changed so much today, everything's online. Uh, you know, a lot of businesses have transitioned onto online stores, uh, but, you know, I'm mainly involved in, in online education. So is there any input that you can give for, for creating multiple streams of, of income and being more intentional in that area? 
there's, there's a uh, scripture in, in, in the Bible as well that talks about this, this wisdom in the counsel of many. So for me, it is go back to you and speak to people within business. Go and speak to your friends and ask wisdom and understanding. A lot of people can give you a better understanding of what is the need within the business environment. Where are things going? If it's technology, which direction is, if it's agriculture, which direction. So we can get involved in many areas, but we have to speak to people and get counsel from people. Now, often for me, I'm privileged enough to have and an are being surrounded with prophetic people. So for me, it is that they can speak into your life and they can give you godly advice and wisdom and understanding and what is the next step for you? What is the new milestone that God, God wants you to, to follow and to run to? But ultimately, at the end of the day, it is your own responsibility. You need to go and sit down and ask the Lord, Lord, what is it what I need to do? If we go back to Proverbs as well, Proverbs tells us that as as men, as human, we make plans. But we need to submit those plans to the Lord. And if we submit those plans to the Lord, the, the Lord will answer us and he will give us the wisdom regarding those plans and what we need to follow. So if you have any business ideas, if you have anything to create a multiple stream of income, write them down, sit with the Lord and ask the Lord which one you should follow. But speak to people with wisdom and understanding. Uh, and get that counsel so that you can have a better understanding of what you need to do at this point in time. Yes, I absolutely agree with you. And those are really, really good tips. I want to add one more to that, is that you find a mentor, somebody who's already in that industry that you are interested in, that you, or perhaps you're not involved in yet, to find a mentor who can help you with, with practical steps on how to get involved in that industry. You know, having a mentor is so crucial because they already have a network of people that they work with and they can introduce you to some of the people that they already work with. So, you know, a mentor is not only there to impart wisdom and experience from their industry into you, but also to give you a new platform or to open up a new door. And obviously by God's grace, he will then lead you further. Um, I've learned throughout the years that the Lord works with me in baby steps and I can't jump from A to Z overnight. Everything is a process and during that process we learn, we make mistakes, we learn from that experience and but we don't make the mistake again and from there another opportunity presents itself. So once you've overcome a stumbling block, the key of course is not to give up but to overcome that and then there will be another opportunity, another door will, will open up. Uh, Johan, as you were speaking I just had a, a sense that there were some people who'll be watching this uh, this particular topic um, that I want to remind you of the first word principle that some of you have drawn especially the prophetic people have drawn into the cave and you feel that you're all on your own and there's nobody who understands you and that you feel that you've lost your way and I want to remind you of the first word principle go back to the initial prophecies that were spoken over you or the initial prophecies that the Lord had given you in business or about multiple streams of income some of you have lost your dream and you have have either backslidden or you've taken a time out or you are on a sabbatical and I just want to draw you back into the prophetic where you are at right now your time in the cave is now over and it's time for you to step out and to start functioning in the prophetic I see specifically somebody who is called into business who has been out of business for a while and now you're back uh, wanting to come back and you just do not have the confidence uh, to do that and I want to encourage you to take that step of faith to come back into business again because I feel you're being called into the marketplace to prophesy to other leaders in the industry and that the Lord will give you those strategies which reminds me now Johan you, we have spoken so many times about ministering to people who are in business and helping those and and uh, the last time you and I ministered together to somebody in business it was quite insightful where people uh, this particular gentleman I, I'm sorry I can't remember his name but we, we did ministry at the church and he couldn't decide whether he should uh, buy out his partner or whether he should continue with his current uh, venture and it was really an interesting time of ministry because the Lord gave us such wonderful strategy for that gentleman and um, I'd love for you to share on how you got involved in ministry in business to leaders and giving them strategy on what to do uh, with their business. How did that start? 
It all started with friends in business. Yeah. Okay. So they yeah. needed your help. So were these friends in business, were they not in the prophetic? Did they seek your, your counsel because of your gift? I think, no, they definitely in the prophetic as well. All right. So you back so, to the council of, of many and you were prophesying over each other. But what about yeah. the people who are not involved in, in the prophetic? Because they need our voices, don't they? Definitely they do. Uh, thank you for that example, Elaine. I think there's a lot of businesses who can actually do with the prophetic insight within their business as well. Friends of mine are in business as well. And when they have board meetings, one of the things that they have learned throughout the years, and, and I followed the example, and I've spoken into their lives as well regarding uh, business decisions, is to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit saying about a specific topic or uh, plan or project? And ask the Lord in that regard what they need to do is if they, if they have to sell property, have to buy property or whatever the case might be, always be open for the leading of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just doesn't always just speak in the church. The Holy Spirit speaks everywhere. That's the main thing we need to understand. And that scripture in your name most, most probably might know where it is. It says that the spirit of the prophet is subjected to the prophet. Yes. What that entails is that you can hear his voice at any given time, even in dreams as well. So there's a lot of times that God will start speaking to you. You have just to have to discern what it is as well. And we are speaking to what is the focus of that particular topic and get his understanding regarding that. So I think in business, it is crucial for people to hear the voice of the Lord and, and to hear what is his guidance in specific things as well. So that is, that is mainly my exposure to the business as well. Um, other friends of mine also speak into my own business environment. And, and, and I take that to heart as well. At the end of the day, just remember is that it is your decision. God can give you insight. Friends can give you wisdom and understanding as well. But it's your decision. And hopefully you will choose God's wisdom and understanding in, in everything as well. Mm -hmm. So often we have to do things. We have to plan a move or anything like that. I always refer back to Exodus 32, I think it's 32, 33, where uh, God told Moses to go to Egypt. And God said, you will prepare the way for them. But there's one crucial thing that Moses asked God. And he said, God, are you going with? And God says, no, I'm not going with. And then Moses replied and said, God, then we're not going anywhere. And for me, that is the principle. It does, it, if you want to go do something, if you want to move somewhere, if God is not in that plan, stay back. Go back to your first word principle, as Elaine has shared with us as well. But if God's not moving with you, stay. Don't even make plans. Go back and wait. But don't be passive. Pray. Ask. He will guide you. Absolutely. I agree with that. Now, Johan, if you, uh, if you could give advice to new people in the prophetic, because I can, I can just see, uh, you know, dots being connected to those who are listening today. So if you're invited to go and prophesy over a, a business or an industry that, that needs prophetic insight, is it, in my opinion, it's a good thing not to know anything about the business because the Holy Spirit is so faithful. He will give you the wording. He'll give you the strategy. So um, I wanted to put it out there that for those of you who are perhaps new, obviously get a mentor and train and get it, get enough training. And it could take, it literally could take years to train, but you don't need to know everything about a particular industry to go and prophesy over them. Um, you know, God's, God's message is love. So Johan, if you were to take somebody new to a ministry opportunity to go and minister to somebody into business, would you prefer that they know everything about that industry or would you prefer that they don't know absolutely nothing about it? Absolutely nothing. For I me, agree. that's a bit of method. It's almost like you have to minister to your family. You know everything about your family. It can be done. God still speaks. But it's just a lot more difficult because you really need to hear what is in God's heart for that particular business or family member. So for me, it's always better not to know anything because God is faithful. He will tell you what is going on. He will give you plans. He will give you words pinpoint exactly same things 
even dates and time and things like that. And we really need to step out. And, and I think this is part of what, what is happening is now as well, is that we have to be a lot more accurate. We have to come to a place that we have to be sure and say, I really feel that this is what God is telling us about that opportunity within your business. Uh, in some cases, we I had to minister to people and they were considering buying or selling or all those kind of things. And I had to tell them, listen, you better close your doors of your business. It's harsh. It's really harsh. It is not something people would like to hear, but at some time, is it better to follow the instructions of the Lord than just doing your own thing? You're just going to mess it up and the doors are going to close in any case. So it's better to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Better to know nothing, Elaine. Nothing. I agree. I agree. It also takes the pressure off the person who's prophesying because you don't need to go and do a whole bunch of research or anything like that. You need to spend time with the Lord. Uh, you need to fill yourself up with the oil again so that when you are ready to prophesy, it will just come through, um, you know, as, and it'll be truth. So, Johan, you touched on something really important. You mentioned that if you were to prophesy that a business had to close, uh, we generally teach at the Academy of Prophecy to stay away from certain um, areas when we prophesy and it's usually that somebody you're not going to prophesy if somebody's going to get married or who they're going to get married to or whether they should get divorced or how many children they're going to have you know things like that there are some guardrails that we that we put into mm -hmm. place and that is basically to protect the person on the receiving end so that they will not just quickly change do radical changes um you know without waiting for a confirmation of a second or a third witness so you mentioned uh, if a business had to close if you took somebody with you and obviously if that other person prophesied something similar then there would be an agreement uh, yeah. that there's a golden thread so we wouldn't do a radical change without waiting for a confirmation of another word and uh, you know it has to witness with our own spirits that is this is this the right timing you know pr often prophetic words are not for immediately today but it is perhaps for in a week's time or a month's time or a year's time and that's where we need to discern uh, god is never in a hurry so for those of you who perhaps receive any prophetic words that are directional and uh, you kind of think but that you know it doesn't fit into my current context it's perhaps just not for today. Perhaps it is for next year. So we also need to be patient. And I'm so glad you mentioned that point, Johan, because we, we also don't want people who are new in the prophetic to go and prophesy and give a lot of direction. Um, and that could perhaps derail somebody's life. You know, the prophetic words are, are quite powerful that we prophesy. And I would leave that more for the mature prophets, for those people who can handle that and who have had years of experience uh, within the prophetic. So I've derailed our whole discussion and we went into business instead of, instead of discussing a prophetic intercession, Johan. But I just felt that there was such a call and such a burden in the spirit for business and finances, uh, what we are going through now. And I know that's not only locally. I mean, I have uh, a cousin who's living in New Zealand who also listens to these recordings. So I'd love to include a larger audience as well because everybody is struggling uh, now during COVID. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel and, and that light is Jesus. So today for those of you who would like to recommit your lives or for those of you who are listening to this for the very, very first time, I want to encourage you that Jesus loves you and that this is your time and this is your season to draw near to him and to draw close to him. If you don't uh, currently are a believer and you don't do not know how to hear the voice of the Lord or you feel that you are going through a slump, uh, like Johan said, it is so important you know we are both very passionate about equipping the saints so that they can hear the voice of the lord and that is an excellent starting point you know connect with us so that we can help you and equip you uh, it's never about creating a platform of for ourselves and johan will agree it's not about me myself and i it's all about the kingdom of god and it's about furthering the, the gospel uh, which is the truth of Jesus Christ. So, Johan, you are um, just changing direction a little bit. You recently wrote a book uh, which just stirred our hearts for the prophetic intercession, and you did training on, on many of those chapters already. Would you like to share with us a little bit about your book that you wrote? And uh, we will, after the the, the recording will add on a link at the bottom of this recording so that those who are interested can contact you. But please, will you share with us how did this all start? What did you write about? Give us a little bit of an insight. Okay, so that's going to take about two hours. No, I'm oh, just gosh. joking. Uh, <laughs> no. 
the, the thoughts and the, the plans and everything regarding the, the book or the manual started many years ago. And I had some pressure of um, friends um, who encouraged me to really finish the book. So with that encouragement and from the Lord, I really did finish it eventually. The, the, the prophetic for me, it's not about, it's more about how to, to function within the prophetic, give you examples and tips, how you should actually, what you should do when you do uh, facilitate the prophetic intercession. Uh, just remember there's two differences between the, uh, the prophetic and in intercession and intercession. Uh, if you just do intercession for me, it's you pray your own thing, you do your own thing. But prophetic intercession for me is going back to the voice of the Lord. What did the Lord tell us? What did the Lord ask us to pray about? That is for me is the important thing. And throughout this, this manual, I'll give you some tips and some advice on how to, to do it, how to facilitate the whole prophetic uh, group and, 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 and guide them and, and show them what they need to do. You, you should have learned by then that to hear the voice of the Lord. I'm not addressing the prophetic as such, and I really want to encourage people to go to a place, equip yourself, and hear the, and, and start functioning within the prophetic as well. And, and a lot of people have a, a desire to pray, but for me, it's about the prophetic intercession, the prophetic side of it. What is the Lord telling us to pray? I cannot pray on my own. I can pray and I can do a lot of things, and, but it's, for me, it's really unfruitful. But if I start to do intercession on specific topics, which I receive from the Holy Spirit, that guides me and that moves me to do a lot of things, to do warfare, to, to honor him and, and break things down, pull things up, pull things down, all that kind of stuff. But it's by the basis of hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that is for me is, is, is the prophetic side of intercession as well. So this, this booklet is really just to help people to facilitate and to help people and guide people and, and give them an understanding how people would react in certain areas, how to work with people who has got strong will people uh, who are very outspoken, others are very soft and timid and shy, how to actually get them to a place where they can actually feel free and, and really just shared what the, the Lord has told him to share as well. For me, prophetic intercession, if you're in a group of people, it's so vital that everyone shares. Because the main thing is if you have a specific topic the Lord has given to you and you start getting all these information from the different people and one person is not sharing, you're missing a puzzle, you're missing a piece of the puzzle. And so often it's crucial to have that piece of that piece to complete the whole puzzle. And it is so necessary for us as prophetic intercessors to share that with your leader. If you pray for your church, you need to share that with your leader. You need to be accountable as well. Accountability for me is we put your name and telephone number and contact details with your, with your word regarding the prophetic intercession. So when the leaders read it, they would know that this person has shared that particular word or, or vision or whatever the case might be. But the thing for me is accountability as well. Apart from accountability is secrecy. I talk about secrecy. It is so vitally important that people are secret agents, if you might, if I can use that word, is to be really, whatever happens with intercession, that's where it stays. You know, that's saying what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, that one. No, it's not Vegas, but it stays in the intercession. And you can share within the group. And there's, I give a whole lot of guidelines of what you need to do there as well, um, just to give people a better understanding. So, but it took me a couple of decades, I suppose, but it's done. And I thank you for my thanks and honor goes to the Lord and the glory to the Lord for helping me and my friends who assisted me in complying, uh, compiling this, this booklet. Thank you for that, Yelaine. Oh, that's wonderful. So, Johan, this book is not actually only for people who are interested in prophetic intercession, but it's also for leaders who would like to start a prophetic intercession group at their local church. Am I right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, that is correct. Yes. I, I, I hope I write it in such a way that you can just use that thing as, as a guideline to start up. 
All right. So it's got very, it's very practical. It's got steps for you to start your own team. So for those of you who are interested in it, um, Johan, how can they reach you or how can they order the book from you? Well, at this point in time, I think it's best that they can just send me an email. I don't know if you can add it in, but uh, the email address is admin at msg and number for you, msg for you.co.za. All right. We will definitely add the link at the bottom of this video. So those who'd like to order it, uh, they can just contact you, honey, immediately and, and you can arrange. Um, now that we're under level one, there's not really an issue with delivery and or dropping off the books or whatever that may be. So for those of you who are interested in prophetic intercession, make sure that you contact Johan for that. Johan, my last question for today, as always, I end off for the young adults because that is my passion. And I have young adults in my home, living with us in home. And what do you advise for any young adults, anybody who's, uh, and I'm going to put in the same category, anybody who's perhaps a, a brand new believer or anybody who feels a stirring to get involved in prophetic intercession, what advice would you give them? How could they get involved? And then I want to get back to two things which I already mentioned Okay, let me start at another point here is they need to equip themselves with inner prophetic. Okay. Uh, not necessarily the prophetic as such, but the thing is they need to understand and know how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is one thing they really need to do. And as they grow within the prophetic, that will help them. But the way um, I'd like to facilitate the prophetic intercession as well in there. I, I do help people to hear the voice of the Lord as well um, and equip them in, in the prophetic as well. Not as elaborate as going through all the modules and things like that, but to give them a basis of everything. And when, you, when they start to get involved in, within the prophetic session, is that they need to, to, to share, to verbalize that what they experience and to share that on, on, on that particular topic. So that is the one area. The other one is, is to serve. Again, uh, coming back to the servant part of it, um, we mentioned about business as well. So for me, it's over the whole spectrum of business ministry, it doesn't matter where, you need to start to serve and say, listen, where can I contribute? Where can I just help? Um, it really, if it's just very the basic thing, if it's totally out of your comfort zone, even better. Maybe you call to be a leader, and the Lord says, now you're going to serve somebody else. It's difficult, but it's a good place to start. So for the young adults really is to, to learn about your gifts. Learn how to function within them. Get involved with your mentors. Get involved with other people within the prophetic. Uh, we often use the word iron sharpens iron because the prophetic is really it's a place where, where people can get into your face. They can really get into your face and... Uh, they have d no regard of your emotions at all. And they just often, so they, so often they are just black and white. Now for me, there's, there's a different area, which is the gray area. And that's the grace. Yes, I That's agree. the grace of God within the prophetic as well. But get involved, serve, volunteer, volunteer to, to, to really just to, to help and assist in a lot of areas. Um, there's a lot of areas we can really just volunteer. And as we start to volunteer as well, your ministry will grow. It will definitely grow. People will see it as, as teachers and, and people within in the leadership of the, of the ministry. We're always looking out for the others. We're always looking for those who are really want to, to serve, but also not just, just to serve, but want to grow within the ministry. And as they grow, opportunities will arise. Sometimes we create the opportunities, but it will arise. And, and, and really it's just to start to serve in that regard. The other, the last one for me, and, and I wish I knew this when I was a youngster, and that's the council. The council of many. Now the council of many could be your parents. Uh, they, they, they try to raise us in, 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 in a Christian or as in, in Christianity or in a, a re religious mode or I don't know what you want to call it, but they want to raise us up knowing Christ. And we really need to sit with them as well. I know sometimes it's difficult to sit down with your parents and speak to your parents. But then again, go and, and 
find somebody else. Find somebody else you can relate to, somebody you can trust, somebody you can sit and cry, somebody you can laugh with, but somebody you trust and grow within, within your sphere of ministry or even your business as well. But sit with all the, all the people because they have the wisdom and understanding in a lot of areas. And I knew, I knew that when I was a youngster. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so sorry I did not realize that fact. Spend time with, I would say, the whole range from youngsters, your parents, older people, because there's a lot of wisdom and understanding within, the, within them and learn from each other. That's the one thing I think which is really important. Always be ready and willing to learn. Because if you have a, a heart for, to learn, you will accomplish a lot of other things as well. But allow God to really create that, that heart in you to learn and to love people. I agree. Absolutely. We should be teachable and stay teachable regardless of our age. Even today, I, the, I think the more I learn, the more I realize how little I actually know. So it's good to be amongst the prophets and prophetic people. I often feel that for those people who are not part of a team or a prophetic group, I think they it's quite lonely out there. So if you are today not part of a prophetic group, wherever you are, try contact your, your local church, see who's involved in the prophetic, get involved in the prophetic ministry with the intention to serve not to take over do not be a burden for your leaders but rather help them and serve wherever you see there is a lack now for for many of us serving is perhaps not the easiest thing uh, some of us I remember when I started in, in the prophetic, I just wanted to be in the background. I didn't want to be, you know, up front. So I spent years and years and years in the background serving. And I never, ever in my wildest dreams could have imagined how serving had transitioned and influenced my life uh, up to where I am today. And I'm not finished serving. I still do serve. And I know that the Lord has got a plan and a purpose for all of us. And we, that will be in 10 years time. Well, we will just have to wait and see what the Lord has in store for all of us. But Johan, we have reached the end of our um, little chat for today, and I really enjoyed it. We, we, we completely went into topics that we were not even planning on going into, but we didn't touch on dreams. So I'd love to invite you back for another session at another convenient time for you so we can speak about dreams. I know that you have the most incredible prophetic dreams. You often share them with me and you email them to me. So when you have time, Johan, it'll be great to sit with you online again and chat a little bit more about that. Thank you so much for sharing about prophetic intercession. For those of you who are interested, contact Johan, get hold of him, buy the book, get some training and uh, remember you don't need to live in Pretoria to engage or to be in contact with him you know everything's online so that's quite easy Johan as we finish off today is there anything that you would like to add anything that you um, would like to finish off with I want to go back to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1 and I really want to encourage everybody there's it in my own wording it says here eagerly desire the gifts of the, of the spirit but especially that you might prophesy now, why prophecy for me, it's not about being able to prophesy to people and other people, but the prophecy for me is the key which unlocks a lot of things. It unlocks this, the fact that you would be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, and it even unlocks the other gifts for me as well. So if I really want to encourage you is, is to really get to that place where you can prophesy, because prophecy makes a difference again in proverbs it says that where is there's no hope uh, i cannot remember the scripture exactly correctly but it says here where's no hope there's no vision there is no prophetic vision from the lord so how good is it to have a prophetic word in season and in time to give you direction from the lord so all the honor and the glory to the lord thank you elaine yes i would love to sit and talk to you about the dreams that would be a good one. All Fun right. one. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for ending us off on a really high note. I also want to encourage those eagerly desire to prophesy. That's what we are all here about. And I love your heart for hearing God's voice, Johan. Well done for that. And it's such a pleasure to have you part of our prophetic community here in Pretoria. And I, I'm truly blessed by your insight and your um, experience and wisdom that you impart, not only to me, but to our mentors and our prophetic team. So thank you for that. Well, we've reached the end of today's recording. If you 
you've enjoyed the video, remember to click the like button below and subscribe for more content and we'll see you again soon. Be blessed, everybody. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.